let me start the recording and I will share my screen. Me too. I don't have uh, a little experience with Zoom. Okay, I can see it. Cooking you for four days. Okay, so um, good afternoon and welcome. My name is Dr. Eleonora Gafton and I'm the program director for Whole Foods Cooking Labs at Maryland University of Integrative Health. I'm here today to share with you my passion regarding the Whole Foods Cooking uh, classes. And uh, at the end, I will speak a little bit about our new uh, post baccalaureate certificate in uh, culinary uh, health and healing. Good. I like. So why cooking, right? So because cooking at time is, could be very intimidating. Uh, people are afraid uh, that um, their outcomes might not be successful. Uh, they feel very overwhelmed. It's like, I don't know where to start from. So today I'm here to give you a few tips and hopefully to um, eliminate some of those barriers that it keeps us from getting back into the kitchen. Yeah. So first of all, in order to have a really successful practice, we want to set the stage. We want to have a clean environment. Uh, we want to set up our workspace in the kitchen that it really uh, allows us to be uh, fully present. We want to gather all our equipment that we're gonna be engaging with for a specific recipe. And then also, getting all of our ingredients, which we refer to it as the mise en place. And mise en place, what it really actually means that we read through the recipe very carefully. We took care of all the different knife skills that the recipe uh, asked for. We gathered all the additional ingredients like any of the condiments and we set it all in our arms reach. So when we start the cooking, we have everything at our fingertips. We're not gonna forget any of the ingredients and uh, we're gonna be able to stay present to what we are creating. Because after all, cooking, it's an art. We, we want to create something that it's delicious and nutritious. So when we are engaging in our cooking practices, and that's why it's so rewarding because we are engaging all our senses. We call this organoleptic engagement. We engaging our sight as we uh, uh, look at all of, of our ingredients. Um, are they fresh? Uh, are they vibrant? So uh, our sight, uh, engages um, us uh, in, in our beautiful produce. Then we touch, what do we feel? Does it feel uh, cold? Does it feel fluffy? Is it smooth? It has ridges. So again, with uh, our touch, we are discerning other properties of the ingredients that we're gonna be working with. We're gonna smell. So what smells are coming up for us? Does it smell aromatic? Is it acrid or uh, is it floral? All these smells that they are coming from our ingredients. And lastly, when we taste, oh, it is so delicious. Do you feel that? Uh, nourishing sensation that's taking over us. So all these are very rewarding. And then when we think that cooking, you need all these uh, fancy equipment. 
basically, we really just need uh, some basics. We want to have a good cutting board that doesn't glide. If it doesn't have um, ridges uh, that keeps your cutting board safe and stable on your place, then you may want to add like uh, a wet cloth that's gonna stabilize your cutting board. You want to have a sharp uh, knife and then your bowls where you're gonna um, place your ingredients that you are working with, a side towel, and then of course the pots that you're gonna be using. If you are baking, it's very important to have uh, a good um, uh, glove that uh, you can hold hot items with. And then here it's, uh, you know, because a lot of time you're looking at, it's like, oh my God, I don't have a scale. How do I measure? Because the recipe calls for uh, one teaspoon of butter and I don't have uh, like a teaspoon. Actually in your butter package, it's gonna, it gives you a diagram that it, uh, but if you're not, so here are a couple, you know, just using your hands, a couple of very helpful tips. The tip of your uh, uh, index finger, it is equivalent to one teaspoon. So that you can use it for your fats, either for your oils or your butter. A tablespoon, it's the, the tip of your thumb, one ounce, when you are putting your first, your index and the second finger together, that's one ounce and you are using that for any of the cheeses. Three ounces to measure your piece of protein, it's the palm of your hand. When you are curling, curling in your fingers to make a fist, just the fingers, portion, uh, it's a half cup right here. And then if you want to measure like the equivalent of a whole cup, it's like your, the, your whole fist. So this is again, it's something that you can really use uh, in your practice when you do not have a, a scale or you don't have any measuring um, so always using what you have available, it's, uh, it eliminates any barriers that you may think that you have. So here are a couple of pantry essentials, again, based on uh, uh, you want to have some spices available, uh, some oils, and then you want to have some pantry essentials uh, that they are shelf stable, you know, some cans, uh, you want to have some nuts, some seeds, and then um, a couple of um, uh, different kinds of rice. So different kinds of uh, uh, grains, then you want to have a couple of uh, different kinds of uh, uh, milks like uh, coconut milk, almond milk, again, and these are all, sh we are talking about all shelf stable essentials. And then you want to have like some fresh produce on hand, like sweet potato, garlic, ginger, and onions. And these last about two to three weeks. They do not need to be refrigerated. And then you want to have some uh, um, fresh items that you need to keep in your refrigerators. And those are like lemons, limes, parsley, carrots, celery. And again, these are just some basic pantry essentials that you want to keep on hand. So when you are ready to create a recipe, uh, you have ingredients uh, right in your, at your fingertips. Um, 
couple of things that you want to be mindful when we are talking about uh, what you want to have uh, uh, organic and what you should have uh, conventional. And you have a great resource, www.ew. Uh, g.org. This is Environmental Working Group. And they put out every single year their Dirty Dozen and Clean 15. So the Dirty Dozen, you want to make sure that these ingredients, you always want to shop in the organic form as much as possible, all from your farmer's market. And then the Clean 15, you do not have to uh, always buy organic. These are uh, in, uh, produce that you can buy what is available at your stores. So keep this uh, little uh, um, information handy again when you are going shopping. So I'm going to review with you a couple of very, very uh, basic uh, knife skills. And once you learn how to create these, uh, again, creating a recipe makes your life very, very easy. So slice we are using primarily if we are slicing onions, we are slicing carrots, we are slicing uh, um, any of the larger produce, we want to slice them first. After we slice, then we are taking them to the next step in dicing. And the dicing, when we are breaking the uh, ingredients in smaller pieces, and that's your recipe will call for diced onions or for diced uh, carrots. Again, uh, the dices can vary on uh, their size. They can be small, medium, or large. Again, depending on the recipe, what it's calling for. Now the mince technique, we are using that for uh, our, uh, primarily for our herbs and spices. So we're gonna mince our garlic, we're gonna mince our ginger, our parsley or anything we will be mincing and that's a very fine. And I will show an example of all of them. The roll cut, the balik and rondel, again, these are, um, uh, cuts that we are using for our tubers, the long vegetables, because you want to create uh, smaller pieces and you want also to create some excitement in your dish. The chiffonade cut, it's primarily used for our uh, dark leafy greens. Again, we want to uh, cut them in very thin chiffonade uh, pieces because then it's gonna be, we are cutting through the fiber, making it more uh, digestible and easier for us to chew and also create some beautiful shapes. And then julienne or matchstick, these are again, um, slices that we are used for garnishes. And here is, so this is your chiffonade, as you can see this beautiful ribbons uh, that when you are, uh, creating your dishes, it adds so much character. So this is your mints right here. These are your matchsticks. This is your roll cut. As you can see, you see those smiling owl eyes. It creates so much character for any of your dishes. This is an abolique or a rondelle. Here you can see your slice. Uh, with your onions, and then you have your uh, julienne uh, with your uh, red pepper. And then you also have the mints with your uh, jalapeno peppers. So these are, once you master these really, really basic knife skills, you can create any dish uh, and follow any recipe with ease and with joy. So when, when we are starting to work on the recipes, we always want to create a base because that's what's gonna give that beautiful, delicious uh, flavor, which is gonna be your end result. And that is accomplished through several methods. Uh, it's a mirepoix, 
which it's uh, finely diced onion, celery, and carrots, or we can create a bouquet garni with fresh herbs. And um, if you don't have fresh herbs, then you can make a sachet and you don't have to be, you know, running out and buy like a, a little pouch to add in your dry herbs. You can just use some cheesecloth or even uh, uh, a piece of uh, a cotton that you have home that you can tie it and place your dried herbs in it. Uh, and the reason you want to do, because you want to extract those flavors and you don't want them to be dispersed all over uh, your dish that you are creating. The fresh herbs, um, you can use parsley, thyme, and bay leaf. This is the traditional bouquet garni, but based on the recipe, you can add any other fresh herbs to it. You can add basil, you can add... Uh, sage, you can add tarragon, it chives, whatever you have and depending on the, the dish that you are creating. And just a, a difference between herbs and spices, herbs are the aerial parts, so the, um, the green leaves that we use uh, for flavoring, and then the spices are the roots, rhizomes, berries, and seeds again. And uh, when we are using dried spices, uh, in whole, then we want to add them right at the beginning because we want to extract all those flavors. When we are using ground up uh, uh, spices, then we may want to add it towards the middle uh, of your dish. Okay, and then another technique that I really want to bring to your attention when we are creating all these delicious uh, dishes is this technique called FAST, and that is fat, acid, salt, and sweet. And this is like a mental rem a reminder when we are tasting our dishes and it doesn't really um, bring our taste but that enjoyment, it's like, we run through, it's like, what is missing from this dish? Does it have enough fat that it carries all this, uh, the flavors through um, our uh, uh, taste buds? Or is it really flat? Does it need a little bit of acid, maybe a spritz of uh, lemon juice? or maybe some apple cider vinegar or a balsamic vinegar or something to add that pop to our dish. Or maybe it didn't unlock the flavor, it doesn't have enough salt because basically salt is the uh, ingredient that it will unlock the flavors of our whole foods. Or it doesn't have that delicious sweetness so maybe we just need to add just a drizzle of maple syrup, or maybe uh, we have to caramelize our onion to create that sweetness and it's missing. So next time when I'm making this dish, I want to caramelize my onion to bring that sweetness. Or maybe I just roast my vegetables that I'm going to use in the dish again to create that natural sweetness. Because we want to avoid adding extra sugar into our dishes. We want to create the natural sweetness, not any addition to it. And now let's review a couple of uh, uh, dishes that we can create. And this is, these are, you know, I'm gonna go through the different uh, parts. So let's look at the soups. Why do we want soups, right? For first of all, soups are one of the best vessels that we can practice that technique fast. Because when you are adding one ingredient at a time, I'm adding just a touch of uh, just a pinch of salt and we experience some changes in the dish, we can really observe. Or maybe we are adding that spritz of acid to bring that um, pop to our dish. 
So it's a great way to experiment uh, in um, engaging in fast. But also soups are so easy on the digestion. It has lots of nutrient density. It's very easy to make. And all you need, it's a great broth. And you can make your own broth uh, from your vegetable scraps, or you can make like a chicken broth, a fish broth, or any other kind of broth, which we will teach you how to make that if you join our program. Uh, so here it's uh, an example of uh, cream of carrot soup uh, with crushed cashew cream. So I'm, I'm, you can see the vibrant color that you have here. Um, I'm using the cashew cream as the, the fat that it really transports all those flavors like a magic carpet throughout all our palate. So uh, yet it's another example of a vibrant uh, uh, soup. This is a, a cream of asparagus with uh, pistachio cream. Look at that vibrant color. I mean, it just adds so much character. Uh, and it's, again, it's very healing. It has uh, all the nutrients are very easy, digestible. These are building soups that it really helps us nourish at cellular level. So just some fun fact about uh, asparagus. It's one of the first ve veggies that comes up in spring. Um, it's a uh, native of U Eurasia and uh, it's definitely, it's a delicacy in Greek and Roman times. This vegetable is hand harvested. That's why it's so much more expensive. Uh, the nutrient density and the ox antioxidant capacity uh, increases in the cook state by 30%. So that's what we want to cook our vegetable. So we want to steam it or uh, slightly grill it. We can marinate it and then grill it. But according to the National Cancer Association, Asparagus, it's the food highest in glutathione. And this is an, uh, an important anti-carcinogen and it's high in rutin, which is another antioxidant that helps with blood vessel health. And it's a great antidote for x-rays and other uh, radiation forms. So just in, uh, imagine if we're going to um, chemotherapy, how nourishing the soup is. And uh, eating asparagus, it gives a strong odor to the urine. This is, uh, it means that the body metabolizes the sulfur containing compounds, asparagusic acid into uh, methanethiol. And most people produce this byproduct that not everybody can smell it. So some uh, people don't have a, um, uh, an, a, a vibrant smell. Okay, so the next category are the salads. Okay, we are salads. Why do you want salads? Because they are versatile, they are endless possibilities. We can use our seasonal ingredients and you can make your own uh, dressing. Again, look at the vibrant colors. It, because we are, eating not with only with our my, mouth, but also with our eyes. We start the digestion process just by looking at our uh, dishes. And we always want to create that vibrancy in everything that we create. So the dressing, uh, you can make, uh, you can dress your salad. So it's, that's uh, one way or can make uh, your own dressing. So, and all you have to do is very, very simple. You add your ingredients into a jar and you shake it. Or you can add it if, you, so you don't even need a blender. You can just use the jar or you can add all your ingredients to a bowl. 
uh, and whisk the oil in slowly. So these are the different methods of making a dressing. So when I was talking, so here are all our ingredients uh, for uh, that beautiful kale salad that you saw uh, when I started uh, this category of the salads. So uh, here it's uh, our kale. Uh, we pressed our kale with the avocado because engaging, we, we are coating the kale leaves uh, with the fat from avocado, which makes the nutrient, the fat soluble nutrients more bioavailable. We are using uh, some uh, violet flowers and these are from very, uh, they are edible. Uh, we have some uh, superfoods in form of um, the goji berry uh, and seeds, and also we have microgreens. So the conversion when you are using fresh herbs compared to dry herbs, uh, you, the conversion it's when the recipe calls from, for one tablespoon of fresh herb, uh, you want to use one teaspoon of dry herb or half a teaspoon of powdered herbs. So that's your conversion. So let's review now some other uh, categories of dishes for all occasions. Mm -hmm. So here it's like a couple of uh, one dish meals. So a roasted uh, a rosemary garlic potato. Uh, this is, uh, you know, these are all one dish meals. All you do it, you just cube your potatoes, you coat them with your fat, uh, you add your rosemary and your garlic, put it in the oven, and in 30 minutes, you have this beautiful roasted uh, potato with garlic. You can roast your asparagus uh, with, um, uh, oops, well, it's uh, asparagus with salmon and purple potato. You can roast your root vegetables. You can roast that chicken with garlic and cauliflower. And then, uh, like I said, these are all one dish meals. You just put everything on your sheet pan and you put it in the oven. And uh, the possibilities are endless creating these delicious meals. So working uh, another very versatile uh, dish, it's the frittata. And this is, uh, you know, using eggs. Here it's a little um, uh, diagram for you uh, that you can actually assess the freshness of your egg. So um, uh, from right to the left, so uh, the egg, uh, uh, one, um, variety of the fresh egg will sit horizontally. Uh, the one that it's semi horizontal, this is a little bit, uh, uh, it's like about um, one week old. And then the older eggs, they will just sit flat on the bottom of your uh, uh, glass with water. So this is an easy way to see uh, if you don't remember when you purchased your eggs. So that's an easy way to assess the freshness. So frittata, it's a, a great way to incorporate vegetables and protein into one dish. Again, it's uh, affordable and you can use any ingredients that you have in your refrigerator. Uh, here it's the crispy salmon with uh, baby bok choy. Uh, again, it's a great source of protein. Uh, you have uh, brown rice and uh, uh, the baby bok choy, which is a great soy, source of uh, folate. Uh, another dish. So here it's uh, a um, baked salmon with uh, um, some uh, dill and then uh, tomatoes. 
So the wild caught salmon, it's one of the best options uh, um, for uh, omega-3. Uh, mm -hmm. It's in uh, the, uh, the health benefits comes from this uh, orange pigment, uh, which is the astaxanthia, uh, and uh, it, um, it gives like a very nice floral smell, but it shows uh, great results to fight anti, uh, uh, to fight the um, free radicals uh, that actually promote uh, neurodegenerative uh, processes and uh, leads to cognition loss. So in addition, salmon is a great source, as I mentioned, great source of omega-3, niacin and choline, which they are all excellent, not only just for brain health, but also for heart health. And uh, it's uh, sustain a great co cognitive uh, health. Uh, just a, a good tip to know, uh, you want to uh, purchase salmon from Alaska that it's wild and uh, compared to the Atlantic salmon, which it's usually farm raised and you want to stay away from farm raised salmon. Okay, another dish, uh, you want to make a roasted cauliflower steak. So again, uh, you are using turmeric, uh, coconut milk, and uh, uh, you can create a beautiful dish uh, that it's very uh, easy and sustainable. Uh, another category are the smoothies. You know, everybody wants uh, a quick and delicious uh, um, meal that it's fat and uh, has a lot of nutrient density. So you always want to start with a base and that could be either water, coconut water or nut milk or even an herbal tea. You want to make sure that you have a fat component and that could be flax oil, avocado, coconut oil or any nut or seed butters. Uh, you want to add some fruit for antioxidants and you have choices here. Again, it depends on uh, your preference, then you want to add a vegetable. So this is an easy way to add vegetables in somebody's diet that they are, they don't have vegetables. So you can do bok choy, spinach, kale, cilantro, parsley, anything. Uh, and then you want to add some flavors. You can do cinnamon, vanilla, cardamom, turmeric, garlic, cayenne, or ginger. And it's always good to add more nutrient density by adding some superfoods. And that could be bee pollen, hemp seed, maca powder, um, flax or chia seed or raw cacao. Again, uh, these are, you know, you want to have all these um, parts, of these components in your smoothie. You don't want to just fruit or just vegetable because you want to add to make sure that you have a well-balanced and good nutrient dense. So here are a couple of examples. Here it's a green smoothie. This is really great for somebody who's trying to detoxify that they are very bogged down, their liver doesn't function, so you want to help them with a green smoothie. So uh, here it's uh, a super uh, energizing smoothie. Again, you have the avocado. Here you have the baby bok choy, uh, and then the beets, which are, it's very high in glutathione and uh, nitric oxide. That again, it helps uh, with uh, um, uh, circulation and with heart health. So uh, avocado, why we really love it, and this is uh, actually the uh, um, Haas avocado. It's always, it has this uh, um, crinkled uh, surface in the round pit. That's what we know that it's uh, a Haas uh, avocado. 
Uh, it is part uh, of the Laurel family, so it's related to bay, cinnamon, and sassafras. It's very creamy and uh, it's high in oleic acid, <coughs> which maintains high levels of HDL and it helps reduce the LDL, which is the bad cholesterol. It's a rich source of monosaturated fatty acids, uh, vitamin E, B, potassium, magnesium, and fiber, and the carotenoid lutein, lutein which is uh, excellent for eyesight. Uh, in addition, we learned that it has, um, uh, it's been shown that it can destroy cancerous and precancerous cells uh, because it's a great uh, source of the antioxidants and fat, uh, and the fat aids in absorption of fat soluble minerals. And as I mentioned, the Hass avocado has this bumpy skin. So sprouting, it's another fun uh, engagement where we can sprout our own uh, uh, seeds, nuts, and uh, legumes. So again, all you need for sprouting, you need a form of vessel. Uh, traditionally, jars are used. Um, and you need a, a lid that allows for easy draining and uh, uh, allows for the air circulation. And here, you don't have, you know, you can do just uh, on a piece of, uh, you know, if you are just experimenting, you can just do on a piece of uh, a paper towel. So here I'm sprouting some seeds uh, that you can see the, um, uh, these are the broccoli sprouts, which they've been studied to have many health benefits. So again, all you need, it's a damp cloth or a paper towel. Uh, you can do chia seeds, uh, Brussels, uh, Brussels sprouts, uh, alpha alpha seeds, anything. So it's very easy uh, to, to sprout. So the conditions that you need for sprouts, you need air, water, warm space, and light. Mm -hmm. So the steps, you want to soak them, you rinse, you drain, you harvest, and then you store. Again, if you're joining our programs, we teach you all these skills. They are very easy. It's not intimidating, and you can create nutrient-dense uh, ingredients right in the comfort of your kitchen. Snacks, we all love snacks and uh, we want, and we spend a whole lot of money uh, to purchase all these snacks that they are available. Again, you can create health supportive snacks uh, for yourself. So here are some uh, immune boosting herbal balls um, uh, made with dates, cashew, and we are using uh, uh, mushroom powders, cordyceps and reishi, uh, as well as turmeric and um, cacao, black pepper, and uh, it yields some delicious, uh, uh, again, immune boosting herbal balls that you can just take one a day to keep your immune system uh, strong. Uh, you can make a turmeric hemp hummus, using garbanzo beans. You can make a banana chia pudding, uh, again, using uh, uh, the chia seeds. Uh, it gives that uh, gelatinous um, texture. And then using banana, this is excellent like for an athlete because uh, the chia seeds help you stay well hydrated. Uh, you get uh, all the potassium from the banana. So again, it's a nice uh, pudding to have handy. Uh, other easy items that you can make, you know, overnight oats. Again, when you, you think that you don't have enough time to prepare your breakfast, how about uh, make, and you can layer it again with any fruits that you have. Uh, you can use... Uh, uh, yogurt, you can use um, 
coconut yogurt, or you can use any other, you can use in a, either animal yogurt or you can use uh, uh, plant yogurts. And then uh, uh, you are using your rolled oats and then uh, best it's to use um, if uh, frozen fruits uh, because it allows to soften your, your oats and then you can top it with any any of the spices you can add uh, uh, cinnamon nutmeg and again cardamom uh, whatever uh, you prefer and then baking again so uh, as as we walked through and we saw uh, cooking being an art baking it's a little bit more of a science part but again uh, you know, we teach you how to uh, work with uh, alternative flowers, so not just uh, um, high inflammatory flowers, that you can make some really delicious uh, cookies that, uh, again, uh, they satisfy that sweet cravings and um, uh, it doesn't rise your uh, blood sugar. Uh, lemon ginger cookie, here it's another, you know, using the lemon and the ginger. Uh, this is a, a vegan uh, cookie uh, from uh, start to finish in 20 minutes, you have these delicious cookies. And then of course, for the chocolate lovers, here it's a chocolate bliss bites. And uh, here we are using uh, um, the we are using maple syrup, uh, vanilla, um, teff flour, and sorghum flour, um, and uh, with chia seeds. Uh, again, uh, we are increasing the uh, protein content uh, even in our uh, uh, dessert. And uh, for the you know summer months, this is uh, an excellent uh, raw key lime pie. Again, it's very refreshing, uh, and you don't even need uh, any baking to do. So this is a raw key lime pie, and uh, uh, it's always good to make your. Uh, um, flavored vinegars. Here it's how to make a violet vinegar. All you need is a glass jar, apple cider vinegar, and then the fresh uh, violets. So uh, those are the violets that come, uh, they are the first flowers that show up in the spring. So I always make uh, uh, my violet vinegar that I use uh, throughout the year. And um, so if you are interested in our programs, uh, if you found this uh, presentation helpful and uh, it stimulated some uh, uh, of, um, uh, of your uh, passion, uh, we, we do offer a um, post baccalaureate certificate in culinary health and healing. It is a 12 credit program. It can be done in two trimester and it's uh, all online. Um, it, uh, if you prefer to take some of the cooking labs in person, you have that options as well. Yet this uh, uh, certificate is uh, fully available online. Uh, you need further uh, information, uh, please call our admi admissions office at 443 906-5745. And I'm gonna stop sharing. And if you have any uh, uh, questions, please um, let me know and I'm more than happy to answer any of your questions. You can unmute yourself or you can uh, also uh, chat in the um, use the chat form uh, uh, of the presentation Eleonora do you listen to me
It's Elizabeth. Elizabeth, do you have any questions? No, Eleonora. Thank you so much. It's very important, your information. Excellent. I'm glad that you were able to join us today. I'm very healthy. Very healthy. It's very important for the lives. Excellent. Excellent. If there are no other questions, uh, I want to thank you for participating today. We are very excited that you um, chose uh, to uh, attend our webinar. And uh, if you have any other questions, please reach out. We are here to answer any of your questions and they are looking forward uh, to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you.